Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Brawley City Council meeting this evening. Successor agency to the Brawley Community Redevelopment Agency this is our regular meeting. Uh, agenda tonight, Tuesday, October 1st, 6 p.m. here in the count, uh, council chambers. Could we get the roll call, please? The minutes will reflect all council members present. Very good. And if I can uh, lean on uh, council member uh, Hamby for the invocation, everyone, please stand. Let's pray. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you tonight for this opportunity to, to serve once again. And Lord, we ask that you would clear our minds, that you would give us clarity and focus on the decisions that we need to make. We know that, that you have told us that those that would be exalted must first be abased, and those that would be the greatest among us must first be servant of all. And Lord, we ask that you would help us to be the best servants that we can be for our for our town and for our community members. We are grateful for this responsibility with which you've tasked us, and we ask that you would give us uh, grace to, to serve with integrity and with honesty and with patience, and we ask those that we serve would also have patience and grace with us. We thank you for the community that we live in. We thank you for the country that we live in. We ask for your protection on us, on our proceedings tonight, and also for all of the townspeople here and we ask um, that you would guide our city with wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <coughs> All right. So we'll go with uh, Council Member uh, couch, uh, Couchman, if you can lead us in the pledge. Yeah. <coughs> okay, ready, begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Councilmember Hamby and Councilmember Couchman. Well, I was thinking of picking on some 4-Hers because I know they can handle that, but I didn't want to put anyone on the spot. <laughs> so, thank you, everyone. We'll uh, move to our first item here, which will be to get an approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Have second. A, we have a motion. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, we'll go to item number one on the agenda. This will be our public appearances and comments. This is not to exceed four minutes. This is the time for the public to address the council on any items that are not appearing on the, uh, the agenda and is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. The mayor will recognize you when you come to the microphone, so please state your name for the record. You are not allowed to make personal attacks on individuals or make comments which are slanderous or which may invade an individual's personal uh, privacy. And uh, what, I, what I do ask when you do come up, um, please direct your uh, questions or comments to the council. And what I'll do is I'll begin, we have a, a few presentations here, we'll begin with that. And then uh, when we complete that, then we'll move uh, to uh, the public at large. So I'll begin with uh, the first one, which is uh, item 1A, proclamation, declaring the week of October 6th through 12th, 2019 as 4-H week presented to Magnolia as well as M&M and the Mulberry 4-H clubs. And that proclamation is in our backup material, pages five. And I'd like to read this proc proclamation into the record. And um, I, I do believe we have uh, plenty of club members here and some uh, club leaders. So um, what I'll ask is maybe after I read this, then we'll, we'll come up front and maybe get an opportunity to get a, get a picture. So um, it will begin with a proclamation for the National 4-H Week, October 6th through 12th, 2019, whereas 4-H is America's largest youth development organization, having supported almost 6 million youth across the country thus far, and whereas 4-H has helped youth in Brawley, Imperial County, California, to become confident, independent, resilient, and compassionate leaders as members of Magnolia M&M and Mulberry 4-H clubs, and whereas 4-H has is delivered by a cooperative extension, a community of more than 100 public universities across the nation provides experiences where young people learn by doing hands-on projects in their communities, including health, science, agriculture, and civic engagement. And whereas 4-H is delivered by the University of California Cooperative Extension, the research and outreach arm of the University of California's Division of Agriculture and Natural Resources, and whereas the National 4-H showcases the incredible experiences that 4-H offers young people and highlights the remarkable 4-H youth in Brawley, Imperial County, 
California, who work each and every day to make a positive impact on those around them. And whereas 4-H's network of 600,000 volunteers, 3,500 professionals providing caring and supportive mentoring of all 4-H'ers, helping them to come grow into true leaders, entrepreneurs, and visionaries. I, therefore, Donald Wharton, do hereby proclaim October 6th through 12th, 2019 as National 4-H Week throughout the city of Brawley, Imperial County, California, and encourage all our citizens to recognize 4-H for the significant impact it has made and continues to make empowering youth and the skills they need uh, to lead for a lifetime. Um, put it, everyone, if they could put their hands together for the 4-Hs that are here. Thank you for watching. If I can have the 4-H uh, members that are here and leaders, parents, family, Mama. come on up. This is your time to shine. Come on, everybody, come up in the picture. Give me a 4-H project. <laughs> Squeeze in tight. Squeeze in. Yeah. Big smiles, big smiles. There we go. They're good. They got it. Very good. Always love uh, seeing that participation, and we all know, I think all of us that live here in Imperial County, the, the impacts that our organization certainly makes. So um, under public comments here, we also have another presentation. This is item 1B, proclamation declaring the week of October 6th through 12th, 2019, as Fire Prevention Week. And uh, I do have another proclamation here. Um, I'd like to go ahead and read in for the record. Uh, this is uh, a proclamation for National Fire Prevention Week, October 6th through 12th, whereas the city of Brawley, California is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living and visiting Brawley, and whereas many of today's products and furnishings produce toxic gases and smoke, which are burned, making it possible to see and breathe within moments, uh, notice, make it impossible, I'm sorry, uh, to breathe uh, as well as see in moments these conditions, whereas these conditions contribute to a much smaller window of time for people to escape home, their home safely, with people having as little as one to two minutes to escape from the time the smoke alarm sounds. And whereas a home fire escape plan provides the skill set, the know-how to quickly and safely escape from a home fire situation, and whereas the Brawley's first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. And whereas Brawley's residents are responsive to public education measures and are able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes. And therefore, I, Donald L. Wharton, Mayor of the City of Brawley, hereby proclaim October 6th through 12th, 2019 Fire Prevention Week throughout Brawley, California, and urge citizens to develop a home fire escape plan with all members of the household and practice it twice a year and to participate in as many public safety activities and efforts um, um, and efforts of the Brawley Fire and Emergency Services during Fire Prevention Week 2019. And if I could have our, our fire leadership, our interim uh, fire chief, Mike York, I would like to, if, if we could present this to you, and if you have any comments, and maybe I think it would be worth uh, getting us a little pre-photo before the celebration that week uh, for the open house. Outstanding. Thank you very much, Mayor and City Council, um, for our public and any of our viewers that are going to watch in the video later. October 12th is our Fire Department Open House, celebrating our Fire Prevention Week. And if any of our public wants to come and learn about the things that were mentioned in the proclamation, fire escape plans, home safety plans, and uh, fire safety within the household, we would very much welcome them to come out to our fire station number 2, 1505 Jones Street. It starts at 9 a.m. and will conclude at 1 p.m. And uh, we'll have a lot of fun events for the family. Thank you. Fantastic. All right, Chief, if you can stay right there. Yeah. 
Council might get in the picture. We'll get a picture real quick, a little promo. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm hey, Council? Come on, Jack. Come on. So, does he want to sell that? I know, right? Hey, you're the tall one. So, this one is the next one. Had to go further. Yeah. Yeah. You were gonna go outside and take the picture of the light. I was <laughs> I gotta cut it out. And thank you for it. And we have uh, one more exciting uh, set of presentations here. So if I can ask uh, for the next item here for uh, the chief to come on up, um, Chief Sawyer. We have some introductions here to make. Good evening, Mayor, honorable members of City Council. It's uh, my pleasure to be here tonight in the beautiful city of Brawley to introduce three of our new members of the Brawley Police Department family. Um, anytime we have a new hire, it's uh, a moment to be celebrated. And certainly tonight with the quality of people we have here before us and the assistance that we received from uh, one of them who you'll get to meet here in just a minute in the past and what we look forward to in the future. Um, so tonight I'd like to start by introducing Susanna Chin. Uh, Susanna Chen joined our police department approximately a year ago as a reserve police officer. Um, put herself through the Level 1 Academy here at the Imperial Valley College, completed that, graduated with honors, and I had the pleasure of being a keynote speaker at the graduation and um, being present with her on stage. From that point on, she came back to the Brawley Police Department, continued as, uh, her reserve duties with us. In all, she uh, dedicated over 800 hours of volunteer time prior to being hired full-time here with the Brawley uh, Police Department in the city of Brawley. So she has truly shown her dedication to police service, to the protection of our citizens here in the community of Brawley, and to uh, the city as a whole. So with that, I introduce Susanna Chin to the council tonight. I just want to say thank you, and uh, I'm honored to be part of um, this community. Mm -hmm. And uh, just thank you, and there's not enough words. Mm -hmm. Great. Congratulations. Congratulations. She's going to now go out to the range and get qualified for the night. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, next, I'd like to introduce a young man who was born and raised in Brawley, um, currently resides in Brawley, and that is uh, Adam Moreno. Adam is a true local citizen uh, that joined police services with the intent of giving back to the community and serving the citizens of, of our great city here and has been nothing but dedicated and a joy to be around. His smile is infectious, as you'll come to learn. <laughs> and uh, he's just been a lot of fun to have around and, and did very well in the process. We're looking forward to what he has to bring to the, to the city in the future. So please uh, welcome Adam Moreno. Uh, Mayor and citizens of Brawley, city council members, I just want to thank you all for uh, having me on board with uh, Brawley Police Department. I look forward to serving all of you. I know, actually know a lot of you out here. And uh, I look forward to being with the Brawley Police Department and serving all of you guys. Thank you. Good Congratulations. Good job. And his shift starts at about 45 minutes, so he's going to go get ready for that. <laughs> we put him right to work. <laughs> um, so last but certainly not least, I want to introduce our newest reserve officer uh, to the city of Brawley, and that's Stephen Gonzalez. Uh, Stephen Gonzalez, like the others, has grown up here in Imperial County, resides here in Brawley, has uh, shown his dedication to public service. Um, I like to tease him that he has now seen the true light. He started out as an emergency medical technician, um, earned his paramedic uh, certification, and currently works as a uh, paramedic firefighter outside of our community, but we're trying to pull him all the way over to the city of Brawley as a full-time officer, hopefully in the near future and uh, get them to come over to the, the lighter side of public service. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, he has been a, a, another pleasure to be around. 
you know, I, I joked about Adam's smile, but I, I mean it in all sincerity, and you'll see the same thing with Steven. They show up in a room, everybody's in a, in a great mood, and, and they just bring a very lighthearted uh, atmosphere to our, our department, which is um, what we want to continue to see. We want to see service with a smile. We want to provide that, that level of dedicated service to our, our citizens, and I have no doubt that these young men and women will continue to do that. So without further ado, Stephen Gonzalez. <laughs> Uh, partners, thank you, Mayor, uh, Council Members, Community. Uh, really grateful for, and especially Chief, giving me the opportunity to serve the community. Uh, like you said, I'm, I live here in Bali, and I uh, plan to stay here in Bali. Um, just again, thank you very much, and uh, hope I see you, everybody out in the community. Well, not it yes. depends on how, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Not about yeah. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. <laughs> I'll applaud Starbucks. that. Starbucks. Starbucks. Congratulations. <laughs> <Thank Yeah. you. laughs> Like Mr. Moreno, his shift starts in 45 minutes, so <laughs> he's going to go out tonight as well. But again, just another wonderful experience of welcoming local uh, talent here to our city to serve our community. So thank you for having us tonight. Good job. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief, for <laughs> introductions and presentations. And as you can see, it's um, something we truly like to celebrate, um, certainly with um, also the fact that uh, we have uh, homegrown um, officers. So again... Fantastic, and that'll that'll take us. Uh, we're still under public comments, um, so I appreciate the public uh, being a part of these uh, proclamations and introductions. But I do want to open it up um, for anyone that would like to come up and uh, make uh, comments or questions directed at the council. Kate Apicola, uh, executive director of Colab, the Coalition of Labor, Agriculture, and Business. I'm here to announce that I have been requested, or CoLab has been requested, to conduct a Robert's Rules of Order workshop. Uh, I don't think this city council needs it. I think you all do a great job. But we're hearing complaints from other folks that say, uh, there's a bit here. So I, we have put together uh, to start on October 25th from 9.30 to 11.30 at the Ag Center in Imperial, a two-hour workshop. I've got some flower, flower, fl flowers, flowers, <laughs> flowers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that I can leave here for you. Um, we are going to limit this first one to 20 so that there's some control, if you will, uh, and that we can actually abide by Robert's Rules of Order. But we've purchased a video that's really good, and then we're going to actually conduct a meeting and then we're going to talk about all those fun things like public comments quorums ethics <laughs> conflict of interest and that so we look forward to folks from brawley driving all the way to imperial it is a friday uh, that was done on purpose to capture the county and iid employees <laughs> who may need some of this just saying so with that Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cola. And it sounds like uh, that could be a really productive opportunity. So thank you. Um, any other public comments, questions? Good evening, everyone. On the, I am here tonight because I need to clear some, clear the air. There seems to be a huge misunderstanding of what's happening with the Brawley, Brawley Cattle Call Queen uh, competition. Um, I don't know if anyone has spoke with the rodeo committer, committee. I am not throwing, I'm not here to throw fingers at anybody. I'm just here to tell you what my understanding and what my board's understanding is of the issue. Um, we had a con we have a contract. We're supposed to be in the first part of September, the rodeo committee uh, to the arena only. Um, the rodeo committee had issues with equipment. It wasn't delivered. They delivered the wrong thing, whatever the case may be. Um, they had an arena closed sign put up on the arena. We've not been in there yet. Mother Nature thought that, you know, I was not having a good enough time with all of this, that let's throw some on. Last Wednesday, um, I can show you some pictures on Facebook that Hugh posted that there's three to six inches water standing in some places. Today, this morning, the decision was made because Danny Williams, who is in charge, Out enough 
that we can do this. Mr. Dale Griggs, from who technically is still in Brawley, which I'm very happy, has been very gracious to host, um, host the whole horsemanship portion of the competition. No contracts were pulled. Nothing was done. It wasn't. It was just a matter of the rodeo committee not having the right equipment, getting us in there when we needed to. This has been something that's happened in the years past, but they had Mother Nature on their side this year because of it not being prepared in time. Mother Nature um, did her business, and here we are. So I want to be back here in, Bra in next year in Brawley, city council members, mayor, everybody. Um, hopefully you'll hear from me in February, and we'll start this all over again, and Mother Nature will stay out of our... And, and possibly get a little bit more cooperation with the rodeo committee. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, one more thing, Matt. Sure. One more thing. I also am leaving tickets for all of you. Uh, we have the usual chamber. Uh, the chamber will have your tickets for the Brawley's council members. You can pick them up tomorrow. Fantastic. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other members of the public? I'd like to take advantage of public comment. Seeing nobody rushing up here. I think we can move on with the agenda. Very good. Um, we'll move to our next item, which is item two, the consent agenda. And these items are approved in one motion. Council members or members of the public may request consent items to be considered separately as it, at a time determined by the mayor. We have a motion. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, mayor, sir. mayor, I'd make a motion to approve the consent agenda as written. Here we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. A motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, we'll go to regular business item three. Regular business item 3A is the discussion of potential action to adopt city council resolution number 2019. Resolution of the city council of the city of Brawley approving the pledge agreement and issuance of refunding bonds. Pages. detailed it contains the history and details of measure D and the original uh, issuance of the bonds in 2012 so I, I won't rehash all that but the the authority is currently in the in the process of refunding uh, the series 12 uh, excuse me series 2012 bonds uh, for de for debt service savings uh, the amended and restated stated pledge agreement between the city and the authority that is presented in the packet would allow the city to proceed with uh, the bond refund, uh, refunding. Uh, with the municipal market rates where they are now um, at the current levels, uh, the city could realize uh, debt service savings in the neighborhood of about 42,000 was the last report that I had uh, that I had seen per year. Um, uh, with us today, uh, if there's any questions uh, that they uh, might help in answering is Mark Baza, with, uh, Executive Director of the Imperial County uh, Local Trans uh, Don Hunt, Hunt, excuse me, uh, from Norton Rose Fulbright Bound, Bond Council, <coughs> and Carmen Va uh, Vargas, who I have talked to on the phone uh, with Ramirez and Co., uh, current underwriters for that uh, bond issuance. Is there uh, any questions that I or the, uh, the guests can answer? Council, any questions? Very thorough. Yet, I mean, we had a presentation at ICTC. Yeah. And so some questions were asked with respect to cost. And I did see an email from, from you directed to see if that can be worked out. But um, that maybe Mark can answer that question for the rest of council. Negotiating with the team uh, about s some savings on the cost, and uh, you know it'll all be better. <coughs> portion of the agencies and the total cost of everything, but we will be. Uh, I will be the point person, but I will work with your staff 
uh, to confirm what those potential savings are. All right. And the, and the anticipated savings, is that uh, considering just the city of Brawley, or is it considering if all agencies were... cost the city of Brawley based on its uh, remaining sure. values we were expected to realize a savings net of 42,000 a year for the 13 years remaining on the bonds mm -hmm. so for us the way we were looking at it as staff was that 42,000 would be back in operational budgets to do more with uh, dollars for pay-as-you-go projects as opposed to the bonding opportunity allowed us to do these really large-scale phases for LTA roadway projects. So it frees up more uh, revenues in a given fiscal year to perform projects as opposed to paying it as debt service sure. at a higher interest rate. Yeah, we're, um, that, that would be separate <coughs> and apart from any other savings that we have in the total cost of the issuance of the bonds. And uh, we understand that the city of Imperial will be taking up this pledge also at their meeting tomorrow. And so we'll just see as we go with the other uh, four, eight, uh, three and four agencies. So another, qu uh, another question, with respect to like a dropout date, when would we need to decide? Obviously, this is on the agenda for consideration today, but uh, when would it be evaluated? I know rates change and it, you know, things could be different in the future, but is there a future time where, where there would be, um, you know, it's too late for people to maybe join in on something? Point so that those that have um, already accepted the pledge, the amended pledge agreement, can have the opportunity to to um, do the refunding and capture the savings. Uh, so right now, Mark mentioned Imperial is is uh, taking it up tomorrow. Uh, we did speak to the county; they're they're also looking into it. Um, and what uh, what the requirement is, is, as Don has mentioned and mentioned at ICTC, that we do have 60 days of a passive validation. So we actually have to wait 60 days from the last participant approval in, in reality, because it is one issue that we're going out with. So um, that, that was sort of the, the impetus of, of trying to get folks signed up sooner rather than later. Um, so that if the savings are there in, let's say, 60 days, we would you know, pull the trigger and go to market. If the savings aren't there and they're not acceptable to mark, the market you know, moved away from us, we would at least be able to pull the trigger when the market comes back. Mm. So we won't go to market unless there's substantial right. savings. Thank you. And, and just with that, just, I have one final question. say you're you're in and you're ready to go forward you know I would just say you know the public doesn't see all those numbers but it it, it seemed like a no-brainer here because we're gonna have some you're gonna get some more pay as you go money and within the same time period of the debt that, sure. you, that we owe anyway no, I understand what about upfront costs are there any what's that upfront costs well there, there's certainly uh, costs as it relates to different elements of, of the Bond and maybe Carmen can mention. So all of our um, fees are contingent upon the bond sale. So if the bond sale doesn't happen, we don't, the LTA nor the agencies come out of pocket for anything. The current uh, schedule is to close by uh, tw end of 2019. Mm -hmm. So if uh, interest rates took a turn, we would definitely be back to the council. Uh, as staff, we're happy to take additional direction. If there's some threshold that you think, hey, if it's uh, not, uh, I'm just going to state a number for the sake of argument, 35000 or greater, we may not be interested. We're happy to receive that feedback as well today. Or if you just want me to keep you up to date as new information becomes available and we learn of who else as a local agency has signed on, happy to do that um, between Tyler and myself. We'll, we'll be keeping... Yeah. <coughs> Staff. Yeah. 
I think, I mean, just providing us the information with respect to other uh, jurisdictions that are, you know, for example, Imperial tomorrow, and that'd Perfect. be good. I mean, if the savings are, are that, that's good. You know, and so I know you can't predict the future, but I mean, if it remains right. constant until then, that would be good. So, All right, very good. Any other questions, comments from council? Seeing none, maybe we can move this forward. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll make the motion to approve the item. Second. second. We have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. And uh, again, we appreciate the support as always um, coming to council. And thank you, Mr. Baza, as well for your comments. Uh, we'll go to item 3B. This will be discussion of potential action regarding Inferno's request to sell and consume alcohol on Plaza Street for the special event that begins November 8th. 2019 at 5 p.m. and it'll uh, end November 9th, 2019 at 1 a.m. Pages 71 through 74 back up. Good evening. Marjo Mello, Interim Parks and Recreation Director. Okay, Director, sorry. Um, everybody's really excited about having Warren G. and Too Short come to the Inferno. Um, Can you say that again? I'd like to hear you say that again. <laughs> Could you repeat that? <laughs> Everybody's excited about Warren G. and Too Short coming okay, to the Inferno. Some for different reasons than no, others, no, okay? Yes. I'm thrilled because it's an entertainment opportunity <laughs> for other people. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Very nicely. I've, I've had three nicely people put. tell me, do not go to YouTube and look at their videos. Yeah, okay. And I said, okay. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> but I've heard they're very entertaining. There we go. Okay. Um, there is a request to um, sell alcohol that evening. And there is also a map on page 74 that's requesting a road closure to make it much safer for people who are going to be spillover from the actual um, restaurant into the street. Also, is going to be a meeting tomorrow about um, the different requirements from the city and to come up with safety plans and things like that. So those are are on the horizon. If that was a, a concern from anybody, um, so this is pretty much what we're asking for. Okay, council, any questions? Well, Could with Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. No, Mayor. I just was, uh, their uh, approximate attendance is 1,500, is that right? That we expect that to be the really high top number. Um, I've heard every, anything from 800 to 1,400, uh, but I would suspect that 1,500 is probably about the most that can be handled. And our um, interim fire chief has been um, looking at the space that's involved and giving really good numbers of... Um, how many people can safely be in the, within the um, fenced area and the other areas to make sure everything's safe that way. But that's what I've heard is 1,500 would be the most that we expect. So um, with that kind of, with those kind of numbers, and it's not seating, right? It's, it's just it's standing, standing. It's a standing okay. event. So that it's the patio and then the overflow into the street? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. One of the attributes of the the expanded area will be possible removal of the interior uh, fencing or partial removal of the fencing in between, so it will allow uh, more extensive movement. We'll, we're working through the details with the applicant currently, so those logistics still have yet to be completely nailed down. Um, what requires council action at this juncture is the fact that uh, the street, the city's property, will be a place for sale and consumption of alcohol. Uh, we do plan to work in great detail on how the area can be cleaned up because it's a late night event that is followed the next morning. Our, our teams arrive at 4 a.m. to do prep for all the barricade placement associated with the parade route. So uh, we do have some fine tuning that we'll be working to accomplish so that cleanup can be performed completely by the event to applicant. The time frame may be too short. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, maybe a little bit touchy. From there, someone right? who likes puns. Right. Very uh, there good. we go. Yeah. Right. It'd be too short. Is that? 
And okay. for Marjo Rosanna, my other question, and there aren't any other events. I, I well, I guess that no. pornography video kind of um, No, I guess it wouldn't. So uh, is there anything else conflicting? I'm just we have no events scheduled city. that would have a road closure associated. We are expecting that Los Cabos will have evening entertainment. Stockman's has an event Friday night. The, the okay. There are Oaks has city an event. American right, Legion correct. has an event. There are citywide events. So, but they won't. They won't block any streets. But not with road closure. Correct. Not road closure. Yeah, clarification. It's what party mean? night. It's yeah. party night. What Friday. Kind of, uh, <coughs> what kind of barricades will be used for the road closure and for, w will it be like a chain link fence to keep attendees from spilling out into the North Plaza Park there? Um, we will have a traffic control plan that's associated with the road closure. Typically, a concrete barrier is not normally placed there for the parade. So we're working uh, on strategies that would help us maximize what work is performed Friday night. So uh, that we're not, uh, we're going to do our best to make sure that the people who arrive to work at 4 a.m., they can continue their normal duties, which are parade route safety oriented. And potentially, we're hoping we can accomplish swiveling the concrete barricade to the sidewalk on the plaza. So uh, it would be because of the speed of traffic and the difficulties of the intersection at uh, Main and Plaza, concrete barriers are typically used I because the speed the of travel for westbound uh, cars, when they attempt to, s to head north, it's a dangerous, right, right. Yeah, so I think concrete's the way to go. Uh, concrete is the way uh, that, uh, and it will be working on a city engineer approved traffic control plan. possible and they're available, we'll be using city street panels uh, to uh, uh, enclose the expanded area. So picture the, the patio and sidewalk being expanded to the west to the curb line that abuts Plaza Park. But shouldn't that be the responsibility of the applicant? I mean, the road closure is one thing, but then using the panels, because that's going to take staff time, go out there, and then during you know, parading and everything else, you know, having to put them back, that, that really should be the, the applicant's responsibility as uh, far as fencing that in. The applicant has requested the use of our panels, and what we're evaluating is whether those panels already are spoken for in connection with the beer garden area that's on uh, South Plaza as opposed to North Plaza. So um, we're doing our best to use the resources we have without overtaxing already very lean staffing uh, through the week. Uh, we'll do our best to work with this downtown business as we do any other. Um, if we aren't able to fully piggyback on activities already um, underway on Friday, then uh, we are proposing to imp use the road closure fee of $500. So we want to make sure that we share that um, with council as well. And there isn't at this time because the we're still sorting through all of the details and conditions, including additional restroom facilities, um, emergency um, ingress and egress. There's a number of features that uh, when we sit with all the departments and the event applicant, it'll develop a set of event conditions. Um, so those are yet to be worked entirely through, but we have willingness on the part of the applicant and obviously as staff will do our best to serve uh, those needs without endangering our staff for being overworked beyond normal working mm -hmm. uh, conditions. <coughs> so I, I, maybe I misunderstood that with respect to the road closure fee that is being collected, am I correct? The intent at this time is yes, unless the road closure when it occurs is just part of activity that otherwise we're using our staff downtown to perform on the Friday. There's staging work that occurs Friday when staff are still on duty. Yeah, but we would still be closing the road down, especially if we're putting fencing up. I, again, it's going back to making things um, fair and, and equitable to everybody. You know, the <laughs>
other there are other um, nonprofits, for example, that are even paying the fee too yes. when they're having road closures. So I think we, we have to remain consistent if we're going to be applying that fee. Yeah. And the document does show the road closure yeah. fee on. Yeah, I think I see it. Okay, with that um, in mind, any other questions, comments on this item? Seeing none. If we um, Mayor, yeah. if I um, may note that the event applicant is here. If is, is present on behalf of Inferno. Uh, there uh, is a expressed commitment on the part of the applicant to ensure that safety and cleanup are accomplished uh, so that Saturday morning activities that are family-centered can occur as scheduled. So we're looking forward to that being the outcome of this process. Uh, there are a number of different times that are referenced throughout documents, and I just want to be sure, as council action is taken, that it's clear that per the letter on page 72, uh, there's an approximate reference of the time ending at 1 a.m., uh, but as uh, we know, uh, alcohol can be served until 2 a.m. typically in a place of business. So if there is need beyond the 1 a.m. referenced uh, to the 2 a.m. window, if there's any strong opinion on the part of council as to whether or not that continues or gets cut off at the 1 a.m. mark, it'd be important for us to note. Yes. 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 Um, we will not be serving past 1 o'clock. I know legally we can serve till 2, but we won't because okay. I'm going to be one of those people out there cleaning up and I'm not waiting till 2. Thanks. So, okay. um, <laughs> and I do That's think good. that um, the music probably won't go all the way till 1. I don't think this big crowd is going to hang out till 1 till we actually close. I think people will be by 11 kind of starting to leave because of traffic or whatever reason. But I am committed to being safe. We will have plenty of security officers. We are going to have plenty of bathrooms set up. Um, we have, we know what we want. We just have to meet with Rosanna and the department heads and make sure everybody knows what we want is what they want. And we want the city to make money. It's not just us. We want the motels and 7-Eleven and every other, everybody to make money. But this is our huge event that's going to get us through next summer. We almost closed this summer, so we've got to make some money, and this is it. Good. We've got to do okay. it. Okay. Miss Gray, just for the record, you are Cynthia Gray, correct? Yes, just I for am. the record. Okay. <laughs> just okay. Getting it on camera. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other questions I can Do, answer? Council, any other questions? If not, we're ready to move forward. Um, I think with all that's been discussed, uh, so I want to make a motion. Make the motion to approve the item. Got a motion. Okay. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing no. Oh, okay. And, and uh, go ahead. You have a one nay. So one that's nay. a 4 yeah. 1. My bad. So I meant to say no abstentions, and then I looked over, but yeah, that's a nay. Um, we'll go to, looks like we might have a similar item here. Item C, discussion and potential action for a Brawley Chamber of Commerce request to sell and consume alcohol on Main Street and Plaza Park for Mariachi Night on November 6, 2019, from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Back of materials are on pages 75 through 77. Um, you've already approved um, events for mariachi night till 10 o'clock. And there was an oversight in actually reading the fine details of the letter. And the request was actually till 11 p.m. So what we're asking tonight is for you to consider um, whether you want to allow the difference between 10 and 11 um, for the mariachi night. And um, the backup shows some of the information related to that of previous considerations of why uh, management in the past has requested that it end at um, 10 o'clock and some of those reasons are it's a it's a weeknight school night work night um, it's also in consideration of the how late the staff has to work and when they start the next morning at 6 a.m. Um, and all the other prep that we have to do are the two main reasons that we've requested 10 o'clock and Katie's here so she probably has a lot more um, information related to mariachi night which by the way I love being in the library and I can remember many years ago kind of salsa dancing when I was actually filing real cards so this is one of my favorite events yeah. do you 
Thank you, Mark. Too much information. Uh, Katie Luna, CEO of Brawley Chamber of Commerce. I'm just here to answer any questions that you may have about the extension of the time, and then to probably clarify um, the request and why we're actually requesting 11 o'clock. So, any questions before I clarify? Go ahead. Maybe you want to clarify first, then maybe I ask okay. questions, so maybe then we get the information. Sure. Um, so it is a school night, it is a work night, but it's one night of year, one night of the year that everyone looks forward to, even Marjo as she's filing her cards. Uh, but so we, you know, every year we do these events, we look for ways that we can improve the event and ways that we can be more efficient, we can be safer, we can make sure everyone has a good time while uh, being able to conduct these in the way that we do with them being open and open to everyone in the valley. So uh, mariachi night, I, and forgive me for reading from my notes, but baby brain has kicked in a little bit, so I don't want to miss anything. Uh, mariachi night 2017 was a bit of an eye-opener for the chamber. We hired a media person to take footage of the event, and after reviewing the footage, we used it to um, identify improvements for safety and efficiency for 2018. So last year, 2018, one of the improvements uh, that we did was the spacing of the event. We were able to accomplish a total plaza diamond shutdown uh, to ensure safety for those who are walking in the area in case there was an emergency and people, you know, in the middle of the event, everyone goes, we don't want traffic going on the sides and people running into traffic. So we took that measure and we worked with the city to be able to close that down. Another one of the improvements that we identified was timing. And as Marjo mentioned, we did talk about this last year. Uh, we discussed at length the timing of the event, and though um, there was there was opposition to the timing, as similar this year, uh, we were able to ex to extend our cleanup time by one hour. So that was really important because we were giving the vendors <coughs> four hours of setup, which takes four hours to set up, and one hour of cleanup. So we were not allowing them the time to clean up properly before we were opening roads, pushing vendors to the side, and we were having issues, um, you know, safety concerns. So this year, we're seeking an event time from 6 to 11 p.m. with the road reopen at 1 a.m. Our publicly promoted event time is 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., same time as we've always had it in the past four years that I've been here, possibly prior, I don't know. I know there's some uh, concern about the timing and um, confusion with our website. We did have it as uh, 11 a.m. We've since corrected that because it is, 10, it is 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Okay, so I have four particular reasons why we are requesting the 11 p.m. Uh, and I'll just go through them quickly if you don't mind. Number one, the attendees. The event has thousands of people all over the plaza. When the event is over, it takes people 30 to 45 minutes to finish what they're doing and to leave the area. Instead of the manner that we've taken in the past, which is um, abruptly pushing everyone out, you know, time to go, time to go, uh, we want to encourage a 30 minute wind down period for people to finish their last bites of food, their last drinks, and then move out. When the entertainment ends, naturally people will start to move out on their own. The entertainment ends at 10 p.m. Our small stage, the entertainment ends at 9.30. So it's gonna start its natural process of people leaving the area uh, during those wind down periods. However, um, as we're recognizing the natural flow of people at the event and the structure of um, you know efforts around people leaving, we, recognize that um, there's another aspect to that, which is people might be in line for their last taco because they had a lot to drink, or they might be in line for their last hot dog because they had a lot to drink, um, or they're just hungry. We want to make sure that they get serviced. In the past, uh, going into point number two is our vendors. In the past, when 10 p.m. hits, that's also their cutoff time for health department. So it's in our best interest to go through, shut them down, allows them the extra 10, 15 minutes that they need to get their last five people out of the way and start their cleanup process. Um, we're not saying 
that we want the vendors to serve for the additional hour, but just to have that, uh, that added time to wind down and wrap things up versus the abrupt shut it down and move out and you have one hour to do so. Um, let's see here. One of the other concerns with the vendors is when we shut down at 10, uh, even last year when we extended our, t our cleanup time to 12, and, I, and if I'm not mistaken, Miguel can refresh my memory, we actually didn't have a road reopen that night. I think it was the next morning. Um, but even with the last hour of extending the time, uh, we still have people hanging around that we push out, but vendors driving into the event area while people are still there. So that's a concern when the timings are too close, we want to make sure that we're not putting people in harm's way with these vendors who are trying to rush out and people still hanging around. <sighs> Item number three, our cleanup. In previous years, because we are pushing people out and trying to open up the road within the hour to two hours, still standing around for 30 to 45 minutes after the event. So um, as they're leaving, our volunteers are going to have to take the trash out. hour to just have a wind down period where we can you know gather all the resources and make sure everything is done efficiently uh, our goal has always been to put Brawley on the map for these events we've worked diligently over the last few years to enhance the events and, uh, and that's in several different ways and not just attendance and numbers but with safety and uh you know, making sure that people can safely come and enjoy these events and, and really create an economic impact for our city. So I appreciate you guys reconsidering the event and I'd be happy to answer any questions. I think just for clarification, so you're asking for an hour extension, uh, last call would... No, 
uh, with respect is uh, with respect to food as well. That would end at that time. Is that what you're requesting? Mm -hmm. And the one hour extension just would be to um, finalize things, get people out. Adjustment period. And the adjustment. Okay. Uh, if I may um, ask a couple questions of council and applicant, uh, I want to be sure that I fully understand because this component of not asking for alcohol sales. Uh, withdrawing that from 11 and returning to the 10, this is the first uh, mention of that. So I'm glad to better understand it tonight. Um, what I think is being stated is a desire for the actual end time to be extended out so that staff's engagement for the final step, whatever it may be, is occurring at a later hour. Mm -hmm. than what was previously considered. I think that's what I'm understanding to be the case. But for the council action item uh, that was prepared, it was really about the alcohol. So yeah, because it I, does I, say, yeah. Yeah. It says uh, the, the, the discussion act item is request the extension of alcohol sales and consumption to 11 p.m. In, in correspondence to the city. So that's what the confusion was, at yeah. least for me. Okay, so it, 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 if, we, if we move ourselves, we get to where we're taking action, just for clarification for the record that this is, um, it remains 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. on alcohol consumption, and, and 11 p.m. is the event for well. the, yeah, and right. food sales as well, so just to make sure. So that extra clear. hour is just to clean everything up, and get everybody out. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, get the last a, people through the line and, and close, yeah. close that, up shop. That was one of my concerns. My other concern was the music ends at 10 because otherwise, if you've got music till 11, we do have school for children. We have a lot of things going on. I, they may not, it may not bother everybody, but sometimes we do get yeah. some complaints about 10. that. So, so that sounds okay. I, mean, I can only get volunteers till 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, they don't want to be out there till 2 but or I mean, 3 the music, in the morning. If the music ends at 10, if the alcohol sells at 10, it's really just an hour extension to get things accomplished. And I really don't necessarily have okay. a problem. Okay. So no okay, so it, it, it sounds like just just so everyone's clear, um, no actions required. We're we're You're we're not needing to that that should be just fine. Right. And I so think we will be amending the ABC yeah. application to state the 10 p.m. ending time for alcohol sales. For alcohol sales. Yeah. Well, that's not what we're requesting. <laughs> okay, that's why I'm asking to clarify because okay. I don't think I think. Okay, so we're I'm hearing so, two different things. Okay, so last year yeah. when we applied for the 10 p.m. ending time of selling alcohol, the ABC license was cut short in time. So when it came back to us, it was conditioned that we had to stop selling in the nine o'clock hour. Oh. So oh, see, what we're asking problem. for is to have the approval of the additional hour with the intent that we're going to stop selling at 10 p.m., but so that ABC doesn't cut us short of the selling time for the event. An hour, that's a problem for them. Um, if you'd like, the city, uh, through our police department, can follow up with ABC to be sure that we're honoring the spirit of what you are requesting. And, and I'd be happy and to and present you with the license from last year. Sure. Yeah. That might be able to be clarified, I think. Right. I, I might be able to clarify just a little bit for council. Mm -hmm. um, so ABC requires that at the time the permit ends, that all serving, consumption, and so forth cease and desist at that point in time. So as I understand it, and maybe Katie can just confirm this, if the permit was at 10 o'clock, all consumption and everything else would have to be ended prior to 10 o'clock or right at the 10 o'clock hour. So if there was people in line waiting with their pre-purchased tokens or tickets, they would they would not be able to be served and i think the extension of as i understand it is more of a buffer for the sales of the alcohol tickets to end at 10 o'clock but the remaining people in line to be able to still obtain what they've already purchased and, and be served up until the 11 o'clock hours i understand that is that correct somewhat we don't want to extend all the way out to the 11 o'clock hour if huh. there's five people in line that have a pre-bought ticket at 10 p.m i don't want to just shut the door on them say sorry too bad you can't get your money back we want to be able to provide good service our abc license last year we were cut short in the nine o'clock hours so you know 45 minutes before the event is over we're telling people sorry you can't get any more beer people become frustrated so they're 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 the buffer hour gives us the time to get everyone taken care of and of course this is all contingent upon abc accepting the the time frame that we're mm -hmm. asking for which is 6 p.m to 10 p.m if uh, if they come back again this year and say, better no, ask for six still, to eleven. It'll yeah. still be in yeah. the nine o'clock hour. Then we to have me, to it sounds like it's that. still six better to eleven. Better ask for six <laughs> to eleven. I think you have to ask for eleven. Yeah. yeah. That's 
That's why we're Okay, ask for extent. 6 okay. to 11 but for ABC my, purposes. Mike, you probably do need a motion. But my concern, though, was drinking until yes. 11. Until yeah. 11, no. yeah, that's... Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. With, uh, why don't we say with promotion of the event, if maybe the motion could state with promotion of the event uh, uh, with a 10 p.m. ending time and the intent to honor purchases made within that ending time or something like that? Yeah, I think we, we, don't, we can do that. We can make it reflective. The bottom line is that ABC, yeah, applications it. We'll till see how it works. If it doesn't work, yeah. then next year we'll know better. I mean, yeah. I think we have to take a little bit of a risk here and try to do what we need to do and in, in, in good faith that they'll act, in good faith that we'll act, in good faith that everybody involved. Well, I think ABC in it an hour early yeah. is incorrect, but that's, but that's kind of the way they do and things. And I'm not concerned with the chamber. I'm no. concerned more with people in general yes. drinking. Yes. Because once you're drinking, I understand. and you're drinking more from 10 to 11 is... <laughs> it, we could get a lot of people left on the road, yeah, and uh -huh. we could get a lot of yeah, trouble. So yeah, that's my concern. We don't want to go past 10, but we don't want to stop at 9 or 9.30 yeah. because I, the event's still I going agree. on. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Comments? There's a comment. question? question. Comment? Yeah. If you uh, can, uh, please come on up. There's a public meeting. And Rusty to this side, please. Just a, a, a comment in regard in regards to this. I think that if you tell the people in advance that hey, nothing's going to be sold after ten o'clock, and if I have tickets, I'm going to get it before ten o'clock. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take a chance and getting not being able to redeem my tickets because I think that if you have a hundred people in line with tickets, what are you going to do? I mean, are you going to just cut them off at 11? Why not do it at 10? So I think that you know you should have a, a sign posted, the the servers letting the people know. Because if you have two lines of, of 50, 100 people each with five tickets, what are you going to do? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Just yeah. just a thought that I would I would put a sign, a couple signs throughout the throughout the garden that says, no more sales after 10 o'clock. Boom. Or stop serving at 10. Stop serving at 10. So it's you won't, you know, and if you have, because, yeah. you, you know, in the past, I've had extra tickets that, oh, well. Oh, you know, too bad. But it's my fault. It's a donation. So, you know, so, it's so, donation. it's just my thought. Yeah. Yeah. Another question, clarifying yeah. question. Is there a plan to stop um, ticket sales prior yes. to 10 o'clock? Yes. What, what Similar that? fashion that we did last year, we're going to be stopping a half hour before. Okay. okay. Um, we do make a last call for for people to use their tickets. I wish we had 100 people in line at 10 p.m. That is yeah, not the case. Not the case you know. <laughs> that would be a totally separate problem. Um, it's, it's, you know, by that time, people have expended what they you know they may still have tickets but they've expended what they can drink by that time uh but sometimes there is a line of 10 people you know okay all right. Happens. I, all right i I, yeah. I think we all have an understanding of what wants yeah. what we want to happen here and so let's yep. just let's move forward so let's let's uh make it miss luna thank you we, we wanted to make sure obviously we're clear on what we're moving forward with act respective motion Oh, you look like I just want to note for council's benefit and the community's benefit as well that we uh, try really hard to be sure that our employees have adequate rest periods in between work assignments during cattle call week. And so we'll be working together with Parks and Rec and Public Works to do what we can to be sure uh, that we're not overextended. Um, and and maintaining workplace safety as as needed because it is a real challenge for us through this week beginning with Wednesday, uh, you know chili cook off the Saturday before we kind of have a quiet there's a little bit couple of a, days a and break. then Wednesday through Sunday is basically all hands on deck for most of Police, of fire, those days everybody, so. Yeah. And so the other consideration that's a good, that's is a good question. Yeah. Extra hour. Yeah. yeah, that that additional yeah. hour is. is a it, little bit we can try it, and I'm happy to report back out. That is the reason why um, prior requests really were met with a ton of resistance because there's concern about the workload. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do are most of the staff working that night, or yes, do you have cl well clean so up basically? They're going to get what, like four hours of sleep or something? Is that their typical report reporting time is six a.m. <laughs> six a.m. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I understand. But, yeah. No, I just, uh, I, I'm glad you brought up the point, and I didn't ask the question, I'm sorry. But with respect to department heads, do they have concerns? 
If yes, that, that's the reason I have conveyed uh, opposition to the concept in the past is because our Public Works Department and Parks and Recreation are performing duties that are well beyond a normal workday. I mean, far beyond even a normal extended workday with overtime. Mm -hmm. So we, we just want to make sure that we're not creating an unsafe set of circumstances for them to perform their duties. And we'll do our best to rotate as possible to keep as many fresh as we can for the, set, the remainder days of the week. Well, I think maybe we can try it this year and see yeah. uh, what kind of issues may come up or don't come up, and, and we'll see. Well. Like Katie said, it's once a year, so hopefully it all works out. Okay. Do we have a, do we have a motion? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make the motion that we just, I think we just extend the time period from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. We do the 11 p.m. time frame, and then we work out the details with the chamber on when they stop and all that stuff. For ABC purposes, it's to 11 p.m., and then we'll work we'll work within those those boundaries. So that's my motion. Did you want to include the 10 o'clock cutoff period in your motion, Mr. Kelsey? That's fine. I can amend my motion to to put that alcohol sales will end at 10 p.m. Um, uh, during the night of the event, I mean. I guess fine. you can include that. But I don't want to do. I don't want to put them in the position. That my problem with doing that, and, and let me share with you my problem with doing that. When we start saying alcohol sales in at 10 p.m., that's what the ABC board's going to go with. They're not going to go with the 11 p.m. So what I think we should do is do the 11 p.m. for them, and then we'll work out internally when they stop their sales. And if we have to. We can direct city staff to direct them to stop their sales if that's what if that's what it takes. I, th I think your 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 motion is correct though. I mean, you can you can have the event through 11. That's fine. That is the true event time frame. But alcohol sales, that's a choice that we make as well within the city council. We we're adding that restriction, so not to extend beyond that time. So I don't think it's going to impact the ABC um, permitting because it, it truly is from from uh, that time to the Six end. Six to time. 11. Yeah. Six to okay. 11, yeah. I mean, if, if you don't think that affects that, then I'm fine with my motion the way it is with it amended. All right, we have a motion. I'll, I'll second, second the motion. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Thank you. One up opposed. Thank you. All right. Moving on. All the Next item will be... Uh, Item D, this will be discussion and potential action to award a contract for project number 2019-05, the Legion Streets Improvements Project from State Highway 86 to Evelyn Avenue to Pyramid Construction and Aggregates, Inc. in the amount of $728,776. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, Guillermo Sillas, Public Works Director. <laughs> Uh, this item is to rehabilitate Legion Road as described on the materials and is from Highway 86 to um, the second uh, intersection which is Evelyn Avenue and uh, so Public Works um, issued the, the, the project and uh, it was received three uh, proponents uh, with bids uh, being uh, Pyramid Construction, the lowest uh, in the amount of uh, 728,776. And um, so the project consists of uh, the removal of a layer of asphalt and the placement of subsequent layers. Um, the funding sources uh, for this is um, SB1 uh, money, uh, an allocation from ICTC to include the installation of of uh, bus shelters, uh, remaining funds from LTA uh, bond, and um, as well as local uh, funds from the city. Um, any questions or particular that you would like to know about the project, what, what is including conflicts or? Council? Um, I've had some concern from residents in the area about the, this, the section that we're going to do. Now, all the sections are slated to be done, but it's in a, in a process where we do one section at a time. And because of the nature of this funding, we have to do that section first. Correct. So that's my understanding. Um, there were some concerns from, from people regarding the construction at Pioneers and would that impact the roadway in that, in that area and all of that. And then there's also some concerns about the rest of the roadway being worse than that area in front of the hospital. But I think it's due to the funding. I want the public to be aware it's due to the funding 
and the way it's scheduled, and that's kind of the way we have to do it. And it'll be in phases, and there'll be like three different phases, I think, to complete that that Legion Road, the complete the, the complete improvement of the Legion Road area. And so I just wanted the public to be aware of that. Is that not correct? Yes, that is correct. All right. So this is the, the first segment of uh, three. Yes. Uh, as you mentioned, um, this uh, section uh, will be um, performed first, and then we have uh, two more sections that uh, is depending of uh, the the other sources of money. Um, we we are program another section with uh, an allocation from uh, uh, ICTC uh, to be performed. the The fund is uh, the the name is from um, SB one two. Uh, from local partnership for Mulaic program that is in the uh, around two hundred and nine thousand dollars to be matched with fifty percent of the city uh, funds and its program to be during this fiscal year. There's another section later on that we were able to secure through a, um, a grant program from ICTC, which is called STBG. That is the last segment of um, Legion Road that is also um, scheduled to be performed during this fiscal year. So it would all be completed this fiscal year. That's However, it's going to be done in phases. And correct. so yeah, there's three nothing phases. we can really do about that. So we'll do three phases. Uh, I would like the public to know there's going to be some disruption on that road. And that's correct, right? There will be some detouring around. There will be some time frames where that road may be closed or other things might occur. So I think the public needs to be aware of these things because it seems like they want the road improvements, but then they're concerned about the, the issues that come up. But sometimes we're kind of forced into doing it a certain way, and I think, I think they need to be aware of that. Um, on the programming end, the intent with the schedule and addressing of the first segment from Highway 86 was really taking into account the largest single employer in the city of Brawley, which is Pioneers Memorial Healthcare District. So our goal was to accomplish improvement in that area, time it as closely to the improvements that they're already uh, undertaking and the expansion of their facility. Uh, we do expect that this can span as much as 60 calendar days. Uh, and that severe disruption is likely to uh, last um, a 10-day period or two-week period, 10, 10 working okay. days. So we are in communication with the hospital. We'll do our very best to try to uh, proactively communicate and be sure that the disturbance uh, is minimized as much as we can. There will be nighttime work performed at the site and the pricing reflects the fact that it's nighttime work, but we're trying our best to work during a time that there isn't as much volume on the streets. Right, as um, city manager mentioned, the, the schedule is for 60 days with about 10 to 15 days, the major disruption that will be from Willard to Evelyn, where the road will be totally closed. Um, but uh, the other section will be open during the days and it will be just uh, construction activities from 8 p.m. to 4 p.m. a.m., I'm sorry. So it will be minimum at night, night time will be all the work except for, for this section that will be completely closed because we will install the bus shelter similar to what happened on Rio Vista and gotcha. uh, Main Street. So it will be uh, an excav a significant excavation, so it cannot be traffic. So that's the reason. But the rest of the job will be performed at night. But they'll be channeled around that through side streets or something where they yes. can come in. They can get into right. their area to their from, homes. From 86, let's say there stuff. will be always access to the Pioneer Hospital. And from residential area to Highway 86, there will be always access. It's just that they will, instead of going through Legion, they will have to detour either on Evelyn or <coughs> uh, Willard to Panel Road and then taking um, Highway 86. So it's that. it's an inconvenience, we understand, but uh, there's no other way to do it safely. But, okay. uh, we are in close communication with the hospital, so we'll be uh, inviting them to the meetings, to um, pre-construction meetings, and also we'll be providing notices. We had uh, our first uh, meeting yesterday to inform them about uh, what is happening tonight of the award of the project, so they, will, they, will, they are very, very well informed of um, okay. the schedule. Do you have a projected start date? 
Uh, with the uh, word of tonight, we are expecting that probably during the first 15 days we will be receiving documents, and then we will schedule the, the pre-construction meeting where they will the contractor will uh, tell us uh, what's the pre preferred day to start. So we are looking at uh, November 1st or maybe before that. Okay, thank you. Will there be a period of time where the ER access driveway is is completely closed no there's always access to to that to those two driveways Jeremy, is there any um, intention of um, plumbing work or in a sewer line any any underground work as part of this um, with respect to the hospital right not with this project but uh, in the um, Upcoming uh, weeks, we are planning to do an uh, investigation of the sewer system to address uh, a different topic of uh, the street, but not with this project. So it will be uh, some rehabilitation, but no excavation, no disturbance of uh, the ground. Okay, okay. understood. Great, okay. thank you. Any other questions, Council? This is a big one, so. Mm -hmm. There's one they've been if not, do we have a motion? We need to make it continue. I'll make the motion. Yeah. Second. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, what did I hear? I, I made the motion in a second. Please. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. Motion carries. Thank you very much, Guillermo. Mr. Mayor, if I could just yep. ask a question with respect to, yep. you know, just focusing back on Legion. Um, this goes through Evelyn, and then beyond that, I, th I know there's two more segments that need to be completed when is that scheduled to so it's it's programmed years of uh through ictc the uh goal is to complete it within a, in the 12 month time frame mm -hmm. so, so we're hoping to stick to that schedule provided uh we aren't uh refocused on other priorities mm -hmm. okay we good. won't <laughs> <laughs> you never know everybody's been asking about legion road yes yeah, for so a long time just like Okay, <laughs> very good. We'll go to our next item, item E, and um, this one has some subparts. So just for clarification, also we will be taking each sub item individually, or this will be this is still considered one item, item E. Mm -hmm. Let me make sure I know there's uh, different backup material references. Uh, it it, it could be one one motion. We just wanted to be clear that there are several items and that are associated with. Okay. Uh, the uh, North 8th Street This is the North project. 8th Street okay. project. Very good, and I, and I appreciate mm -hmm. that. So this is item A, discussion of potential action regarding the street's rehabilitation. Phase 11 project as follows in the backup material is uh, from getting on page 81, looks like all the way through 124 in Guillermo's. Uh, yes, uh, as you may recall, we recently completed our LTA uh, street rehabilitation program. And uh, that included the rehabilitation of 8th Street from A Street to the northern uh, limits about uh, the extension of Jones Street. So in that regard, so the stakeholders express uh, the interest of uh, complete uh, the road uh, with uh, rehabilitation. And uh, that segment is a shared road between the Imperial County and City of Brawley. And the county was... Um, proposing and were able to obtain uh, funds for the completion of this project and taking advantage of our contract uh, to save time and uh, money in the procurement process so they uh, coordinated with us to be able to temporarily suspend the project until they have all the documentation ready to be able to issue a change order uh, the city to the contractor to continue with this rehabilitation. So that process was completed with the approval from the County Board of Supervisors to um, uh, provide funding for, for this project. And that's the item that is before you to uh, issue a change order to our current contract, which is temporarily suspended, to continue with the rehabilitation of this segment. Uh, which includes uh, the installation of uh, traffic control in Caltrans right away that uh, took some time to obtain the encroachment permit. So once uh, everything uh, is finalized, so the last step will be to uh, the council to approve this uh, change order uh, to be able to start construction 
uh, approximately duration is from October 22 to November 8 um, of um, it is is a is a quick project because it's a it's shorter than the, the segment that we perform. Um, any questions that you might have? All right, council. It's been long awaited. A lot of work. I think we're looking forward to it getting finished. Um, just in the, the, the items uh, that are included are in the very similar format that we, we did our project. It was a, um, a program including construction management for 8th Street and for geotechnical um, testing. And we are uh, extending those contracts or amendments to those consultants as part of this item. So that's the reason to include um, these items in this project yeah. okay you want Any a motion? questions comments you want a motion uh, we're ready yeah okay right, good unless there's further discussion do we have a motion okay I move that we approve change order number two for contract in an amount not to exceed six hundred and seven thousand three hundred ninety five dollars to aggregate products incorporated authorize amendment number one to lc engineering consultants incorporated for construction management services in an amount not to exceed eighteen thousand three hundred seventy five authorize amendment number one with sierra material testing and inspection for geotechnical testing services in an amount not to exceed five thousand ninety dollars and authorize the charging of our actual staff time to imperial county for project administration and an amount to be determined and that's my motion we have a second I'll second we have a motion we have a second all those in favor say aye aye any opposed seeing none motion carries very good thank, thank you very you. much Guillermo. Thank, you. thank you Guillermo moving on we'll move to item four informational reports 4A is record of building permits and uh, that is in our council packet uh, pages 125 through 126 for your information and unless there's any comments we'll move on to the next item item 5 will be our department reports and we'll begin with our monthly staffing report for October 2019 as prepared by Ms. Bonillas. Honorable Mayor, Council Members, Shirley Bonillas, Personnel and Risk Management. Unfortunately, this uh, report does not reflect. We now have two dispatcher opening, two and a half, uh -oh. right, Chief? Two and a half Again. dispatcher <laughs> opening. Yeah, it's dispatchers are getting to be just as much of a struggle to keep us staffed on other positions as well. It's PD is not our only struggle. Uh, we have a utility lead man position now. If I went back and looked, it's probably been five years. So we struggle with a few positions, but of course I'll answer any questions you may have. We do have inter uh, interviews tomorrow for the accounting assistant, finance departments, um, really struggling as well with low staffing levels. Hmm. When you say two and a half, is the, the half it it does something else or it's a part-time position? It's a part-time. It kind of helps with the fill-in, of course, with vacation and sick leave, but it also, um, with the way the scheduling goes with dispatchers, it kind of fills in some gaps with that as well. <coughs> So it's not exactly <coughs> 20 hours. It's scheduled at 12. Okay. okay. How many How many dispatchers total? Seven. <coughs> I love Chief. Eight. <laughs> so we're at six and a half right now. We're at six. So with the part time, it'd be eight and a half. Okay. We're at six right now. Right. Yeah. We were at seven. Uh, we had a recent resignation. Okay. Any other questions? See none. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. for that report. <coughs> we'll be back up as Guillermo Silas with the City Engineering Public Works uh, report. Hello again. Yeah. Um, the, regarding the sedimentation basin components replacement project, <coughs> um, the emergency continues, and that contractor, Gerlit Mitchell, um, visited on September 18 the with water the water treatment plant to take measurements on the second sedimentation basin to compare with the chalk drawings um, that were provided by the manufacturer. Um, they will provide a report with the dimensions taken from the basins to, um, and they will be uh, also combined. Uh, with the submittals review from uh, the consultant and the city uh, staff. Any question? It is scheduled to start uh, the actual demolition during this month of uh, October. 
Okay. Any questions? Thank you. No. Nope. Next item. Very good. Okay, regarding the other item, the replacement or rehabilitation, better said, uh, of pump 422 of the water treatment plant, it was removed uh, on September 12th from the company Brax, and they took it to the shop and they deassembled and they ordered materials um, to uh, rehabilitate the pump. Uh, everything is going according to the schedule. So if you have uh, any questions. When do you expect that back? Uh, I believe that they said between six and eight weeks because they um, changed the brand of the impeller and the bolts so the mm -hmm. and, and also their savings of about $5,000 per pump. Remember that there's two pumps, 422 and 423. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Next item. The next item being the traffic signal as at uh, Main Street and Cesar Chavez. On September 13, San Francis Electric Crew completed the installation of the temporary cabinet for that uh, signal at Main Street and Cesar Chavez. Um, and they found during that replacement that the uh, detecting loop, which is on, uh, located at the northbound of Cesar Chavez, is not detecting uh, traffic, so they put it on, on fixed time, and they provided us a quote to fix those loops in the amount of 7500 in addition to the previous amount, uh, because uh, they don't do that job, they need to subcontract it, so it is, uh, we give them the, the okay to proceed with that, so they will come uh, the next week to install those loops. However, they will not connect to the cabinet because uh, they will wait until the permanent cabinet arrives to save one trip to the programmer to do the programming of uh, the loops with the, with the cabinet. So everything is on schedule. The last uh, update that we have from them is that the permanent cabinet, um, they order on July 30th and is expected to be at the end of November yeah, and in town. This for you to know, Mr. Trim talked to me on Monday and said we couldn't win for losing. We had that one fixed, and the other two were blinking at the because of the rain. We lost two more or something. He right, but they were win, fixed. But uh, they all yesterday. fixed all. Yeah, right. they were fixed. So <laughs> he just told me on Monday. He said you guys can't win, you know. And I said no, we can't. You know. Yeah. So it was the it was the rain though. Okay. The the other item, if you don't have further questions, uh, is the Allen Street uh, between Western Avenue and El Cerrito. Um, the public works staff completed the plans uh, to the 95% or so, and today we had a, a review of the plans and the game plan. And since uh, the street is uh, populated and there's um, sensitivity of the existing line, uh, water line, so we discussed internally and we came up with the idea to install uh, instead of a normal procedure, so we most likely we will install um, a above ground temporary line to provide water to the residents to be able to work freely on the street without the risk or reducing the risk of another water break and create a you know a, a, a problem with the material. So we will um, modify the plans and the sequence of construction to be able to include that. Uh, and of course, that it will be a little bit more expensive, but we think that is more secure to that, that way and to um, assure residents that they won't be without water. Might be some reduced pressure, not significant, because we think that the line will be about two inches diameter or so instead of the six inches that is currently. Uh, but we think that is is better to do that, and with all the demolition, the heavy equipment that will be working on it, so the risk of uh, break the, the line is significant. So it will delay another week to finalize plans and specifications. How will you set that up above ground? I guess that's my uh, above question. ground is is um, it, in reality won't be uh, visible. We call it because it's not like a permanent installation, so it will be behind the current curb and gutter. There's no sidewalk, so we have that advantage. Uh, there's some um, irrigation line that will have to be cut temporarily and be restored later on, but we, will pl we are planning to excavate one foot or so 
below ground and to, to protect the line instead of just being <laughs> exposed that somebody can, you know, hit it oh, or so. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, unfortunately... I'm chuckling because... You know, we have some issues over on that street anyway, and this is not going to be good. Probably, right. The, the segment yeah. that's in play is so fragile. So this alternative that's been identified, we've talked through kind of the, the options to wait for another break, which is basically a matter of time, mm -hmm. um, or to seek a permanent correction. Mm -hmm. The permanent correction is going to involve disturbance to the residents yeah, and knowing how populated it is and knowing how sensitive the line, how likely it is to have another issue uh, emerge as construction is occurring, this above ground alternative <coughs> Um, assures continuous service or I, I, as best as we possibly I can. I think it's a great alternative. Yeah. I just think that some of the residents might have some issues with cutting of their <laughs> some of their stuff and, and some of the other things that go along with that as we, as we are well aware over the last six months or so. What well, we will area. try to do, uh, we have to remove the curb and gutter anyways. We have to remove some portion of the driveways. So the landscaping will be affected but we are planning to backfill and to put maybe some mulch or so to promote the growth of uh, the landscaping. Okay. So we will do some mitigation uh, measures to to try to help, uh, you know, with the landscaping. I also, we will restore the irrigation lines and... I think you will do a fine job. I just think we're going to get some feedback you know, right, of a negative yes. nature because of the nature of the way that street is set up. Um, I, I've had some contact with residents in the area um, they have been incredibly understanding about the infrastructure's limitations out there mm -hmm. um, we will be proposing outreach to the area okay. and um, kind of getting everybody into a common space so we can talk through the game plan because again there will be disturbance to street access that's considerable yes. Um, in in talking with longtime residents in that area, it seemed th they have grown accustomed to so many issues on that street. They no. they're uh, really surprised to hear that the city's going to go in and correct, and hopefully once and for all, so we have we can stop going back to an area that has chronic issues. I think once it's done, they'll be happy. I think we will get some negative feedback. We just have to communicate with them. I think in the proper fashion and, and make sure we get everything done correctly. And I think it, it'll work. I mean, ultimately, I think it'll be a good thing for that area. All right. Very good. Any other good. comments? Thank so you, Grimmer. Thank the, you for the, the report. The temporary uh, line, the two-inch line, what is that? What material would that be out of? Uh, PVC. Okay. Plastic. And the six-inch that's there currently, what is that? Uh, cast iron. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And the new one, what will that be? Uh, it will be PVC also, but uh, it will, uh, thick schedule, so it will be more resistant. How big will it be? Uh, eight inches. Eight so inches. it will be bigger, bigger than, than the because the minimum standard right now is eight inches. So a long time ago was six inches probably, but we will update it to um, upgrade it with uh, eight inches. That's and it will be connected to a big line on um, El Cerrito, which is 24 inches. So the pressure will be enough. Which will be better. Right. Okay. Much better. You won't blow the line. Like no, like that's why we are, we are installing inch. this this um, Very good. type of material. That sounds good. And yeah. also, we will uh, replace a short segment on along Western Avenue to try to eliminate the the risk also, because when you do a, a weak uh, section stronger, so the problem will move just mm -hmm. to the next one. So okay. Thank you. The yeah. six inch Thank line, you. the six inch cast iron is probably only two inches anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like this yeah. Yeah. dirt's yeah. holding it together. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, we got All right. Well, left on there. Yeah. yeah, if there's any iron left, maybe not. <laughs> and one, okay. one other item under uh, departmental reports, item C, report on parks and rec commissions, request to install a portable backstop at Jeff Thornton Park from January to June annually, and requests for staff direction. Good evening again. I'm wearing my leafy Parks and Rec hat. Um, we've had people over time call um, about the danger of balls rolling into the street, especially Legion, um, out of Jeff Thornton Park when people go to play catch. 
practice, field, um, and all the other terms I don't have no clue about related to softball. Um, but um, so one of the things that we looked at because it was the beginning of softball season was to go ahead and try to install a backstop um, as a temporary measure to help. And on the one day that we did it, there were several complaints. And so it was removed the same day. And the two main concerns with the complaints were the aesthetics. Because it was a rehabbed bright blue backstop, um, and then the other was um, talking about the use of that particular park and whether it was appropriate or not for that particular neighborhood park. So in your backup information, um, mm -hmm. some of the information that we have is that um, I put a quote in as to what a neighborhood park is from our five-year plan that um, was created in 2012. And it says a neighborhood park is an area for intense recreational activities such as playing fields, courts, playgrounds, and passive use areas for walking, jogging, and picnicking. These parks are easily accessible to the neighborhood population and are geographically centered with safe bicycle and pedestrian access. Um, this particular park is also within the acreage that's listed um, for this type of park that's usually between two and I think it was 12 um, acres and this park is a little over five acres. So uh, this particular park falls into this definition. So um, at a Parks and Rec Commission meeting, there were a couple of meetings with discussion and then actually it was an action item on the agenda um, and it was unanimously asked that we request to the City Council that we go ahead and place a much more attractive portable backstop up just from the months of January through June, which is the main part of the season for softball and baseball. And again, the main concerns are safety um, and um, worried about, especially with Legion Road, the, the ball rolling in there and people following. And there is a map. Okay, and it's not real easy to see. The street on the far right is Legion. Um, and the backstop has a little blue line that is not real visible. Right there. Thank you. It's right there. Yep, right there. Okay. Um, is where we would like to place the backstop. And again, from June to July, there is absolutely, and it was clear from the commission also, no intention to have any kind of a field set up. No pitcher's mound, no bases, um, none of that. It was just for basically personal and recreational use. Um, the recreation department has absolutely no intention of scheduling any teams for practice or games or anything else in that park. It's basically just a safety request for that particular park. And we have some um, commission members, if you have more questions or if they have something else to say, but that's basically the nuts and bolts of what the request is for. And what we'd like tonight is to get some direction from the council um, to see if this works, because January is coming up again. Okay. All right. Questions, comments? I have a question. Just w with respect to the uh, the backstop, uh, Marja, who is requesting it? Is it softball leagues? Because today I passed by, and there were children out there that are about maybe six or seven years old that were playing soccer. Uh, so I think, I mean, obviously they're not, but... Right, and, and we're it is soccer season right now. In fact, I'm happy to brag that there are 410 children signed up for the city soccer leagues. I'm sorry, I always put the good <laughs> stuff in there too. Um, which is why we're looking at January through June. And actually, it's residents in the area who have either been playing when the ball goes into the street, or we've had a couple of um, concerned residents who say, I'm really concerned for this area because the kids, the ball's going in the street. And that's basically the, the concern that we have is some of the residents calling. it. I assume it's probably more the people who can see the park on the edge, um, but we've been concerned with that. Right. We have also received requests from our Parks and Rec Commission members who have fielded 
requests in the community. Yeah, I remember when the, the backstop went up, it was before 8 in the morning, and I had already received three calls that were uh, not happy that the backstop went in. So right. that was, there's was also the other side to it, too. But with respect to the temporary nature of the backstop, um, where would it be stored otherwise, and what I, would it I assume like the, the public works yard? We're, we're going to ask the expert. <laughs> so this is the expert. So, um, expert sensing yes. material that isn't currently in use are temporary panels. We've got space at the public works yard, both enclosed and in the open, um, where uh, Parks and Rec has secure space for its items. Because there isn't a diamond at that location. Correct. So I think the concern, though, too, is once things are temporary, they become permanent in nature, that expectation is there. And so I realize that we're saying that no field is going to be created there, but I don't think there has been given a lot of consideration with respect to the neighborhood aspect of that park. There are no restroom facilities there. It's not really intended for team play. It's, you know, I, I realize that there's, there's uh, you know, in fact, today I saw people walking the area. So I'm just, uh, my concerns would be those, and those were, were the concerns that were expressed to me as well. Uh, good evening. The, it will be stored at Public Works Yard or the water plant as well. We store, um, like our soccer goals, we store them right there at the water plant as well, uh, out to the edge. Mm -hmm. um, out of the, vi of the view of the people, that way we can get it out of the park. Um, and the request, a lot of the phone calls were from uh, teams that sign up for Little League, T-ball, uh, softball, and it was just like, oh, well, we have uh, an hour practice and there's, I think, three teams that have been using it every year, and they're requesting it because the balls go out, the balls go out. And then at the same time, we have the neighborhood people that say, well, it's a good idea. And like you say, there's some people that say, yeah, it's a bad idea, but. Okay. So. Well, what was the reason, what is the bad, I mean, I, I, I live in that neighborhood, I, I go through there, and, I, and I'm always real cautious uh, because there's kids playing there anyway, but um, I don't what was the negative part of it? I mean, why why don't some of the neighborhood people want it? it what was the negative part? Aesthetics. Aesthetics. Was the aesthetic. old, uh, old yeah, I, w okay. I think it was a uh, we try to do something with something that was old and oh, okay. try to fix it up. And but I but the other part of it too was that you know, there also is concerned with respect that there isn't really netting to prevent you know, foul balls, other things like that. So there was a concern with that. And if, if you do have a backstop, it's going to promote higher speed pitching, that sort of thing. So that was the concerns that were, were expressed to me. I, I went out there today just to take a look. I, I, I wanted to drive around. I wanted to get a clear picture of it. Uh, there's, I, I think for, for big kids to play and play regular hardball, it might be a problem in that area simply because of the size of the field. I think for, for Little League and those kind of guys and the smaller ones, say <coughs> the, the five, six, seven-year-olds, it, it's probably enough space. I looked at that. It's kind of a, when you look at it from the side, I wondered where the backstop was going to be, but when you put the backstop in, you look at it, it is an uphill kind of slope that goes to that park. So in reality, you, you, if, if they hit, you know, you, you're not going to get too much out of the park from, that, from this direction. I do see the concerns on Legion Road because it's a well-traveled street and they come fast. Now that we have it all, it's kind of messed up. It slows them down a lot so they can't go as fast. But, but when we fix it, they're going to be, they're going to be blazing <laughs> down through there. So I understand the safety issue. The other three streets are not utilized as much. I saw the school bus letting kids off there at the park. They pull up, they put up the stop sign. They were letting the kids off. A bunch of, quite a few kids getting off right there on this side, on the road that runs here. There's a vacant lot on this side. There's about six houses that might be impacted on that side. And then most of the houses on this side are, th there's like a, um, well, they don't really face the street. They're, they're kind of a side view of the house with fencing. So there's not, and then, and then across Legion Road, which would be to the back of the backstop, there's not too much activity there. I, I, don't, I don't know. I know there's residents that are for it. I know there are residents that are against it. I think we need, maybe we need full utilization of our parks. I think I would like to maybe survey the neighborhood a little bit, maybe talk to some more people, maybe get some testimonials from people about it, and maybe make a decision at a later time if, we're, if, if we can do that. I mean, we have till January. I think we could put this on the agenda for next month or something, and we could take a look at this and maybe, maybe survey the residents, talk to them, and also how many kids are over there that are going to utilize this park for Little League practice. Because it's difficult, I think, for the kids in this area to necessarily have access to a park that's way across town. And so 
those are some of the concerns that that, that, I, that I saw when I drove around. I, I, I think there's a there's a safety issue on Legion Road, certainly, but I, and I'm not sure that the that the portable backstop is going to please anybody in aesthetics because it but, doesn't. But look But Sam, really if good. there's a safety issue. Isn't there always a safety issue with any other there, kind of ball? It's the too? same. Soccer. It's the same way with any basketball. With, it's the I mean, same way with a, any kind of park. It's at Witter. They yeah. they kick, they kick hit it over K Street. Uh, you know, I'm sure he knows. So they they hit it over I'm, First Street. I, I mean, just, I just want to caution that part of it to say. I mean, uh, there, yeah. there isn't anybody here that doesn't. Yeah. Um, to do to safety, but uh, you know, I, I think we need to be a little realistic about that too. In terms of that, that park has historically had multiple different type of you know sport activity that Im involves you know some kind of a round some kind ball. Of round ball, that's yeah, and it go goes out, out in the, the street, street all the time. So I mean, yeah, you know, it, it just this backstop's not going to keep that from happening. And no. it, my my only my, my concern just as somebody that you know I coached a number of years as well and and I I went through all the same steps of locating a field to practice and thank God we have the you know the schools participate obviously you know the parks that we have um, at the end of the day it's probably never enough. No. Um, what I've always noticed about Thornton and again just my experience is just if it's age appropriate something like a uh, t-ball or you know uh, maybe the very introductory parts of like coach pitch or something like that on the even on the softball side that's one thing my cons my immediate reaction when I saw this was something a little more substantial like that to me seems like that you're you're you can really raise the level of of, of user and play right because it's gonna be there including on the weekends so if when, when I'm concerned about what's to keep a 15 year old from warming up their arm on on Saturday and has anyone seen a wild pitch now we're talking dealing with potentially projectiles someone throwing 50 you know or, or, or something or, or maybe somebody you know taking batting practice or something like that so I don't know if all those things were discussed I would almost want to engage I, I wasn't at the commission I meeting but yeah, they're just things like that baseball and, and softball granted we don't have enough of those fields you know there's especially when you get to the older kids or even and, and for that matter it doesn't have to be that old I mean even 10 year olds 11 year olds they're they're throwing heat and they're hitting hard you know with with the bats they're using we got to be a little careful about where those activities take place that would be my only you know concern with something like uh, considering and this. it's something that we can't control as city employees uh, where they go practice yeah. Right. It's just a concern that they've been bringing up to our to our attention, and we just want to address it before something does happen, and they tell us, well, we didn't take no action. Uh, my, my suggestion, as I indicated, was not to make a decision tonight. I think we need to talk about this, maybe engage with the Parks and Rec, right. and then maybe talk to the neighborhood over there and right. find out, you know, some of their feelings I'm, on it. I'm just looking over at yeah. Council Member Hamby, Hamby who's on the He's committee. On the yeah. right. He's going to yeah. chime in on what Well, the, that has been touched on that, that – when you put something there, it may be an invitation to people that aren't already using it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but be that as it may, this is a response to multiple phone calls and concerns from residents in the area and users of that park. I think Sam has a, has a good point that maybe polling some of the residents around there would be good. Um, but uh, there is always that risk that by improving a facility, a park like this, it's going to invite more and stronger players that mm -hmm. you know could could create a problem. Yes, I have a question with respect to maybe other locations. I know we do have obviously a lack of parks to practice at. You know, but are other parks? You know, I think of Pat Williams. Is that like underutilized? I don't know who practices there. But is that is there like are there other locations backstop? where it could be yeah. th more permanent, you know, in nature instead of like a portable backstop? At uh, Pat Williams, we have one permanent right there already, mm -hmm. and they do use it for uh, those months of baseball, uh, for the little league, and t-ball. I think we have like three or four users as well over there. That and it's like I don't know how many teams in in Little League 50, 50 40 teams. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah. and it's all like the different levels. There's never enough. But space. is there is there I guess an opportunity? That I think that's underutilized, right? Is there an opportunity to make that more of the the location because there isn't traffic down there? There isn't that concern. Is there more of an you know to make it to where you can add maybe two backstops out there? Is that possibility? There? Yeah, and then as well revamp the old small ones that we have like at Gonzales, Hinojosa, yeah. the ones on the uh, opposite corners from the bigger ones. That way the, the older ones, they're, the balls go through. 
Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah. we're we're trying well, to revamp as those as well. Was there any discussion at the commission meeting also, or, or uh, the Park Parks and Rec Commission about um, the the other thought that I had looking at this was proximity to the actual pathway that kind of circumnavigates the park, mm. um, with you know the potential of pitching even if it is from an eight-year-old or whatever the case may be was there any was there any risk factor that you have pedestrians walking around and enjoying that park that I obviously do so what well, about I, I think on that that's putting a distance to the to the sidewalk as well because our some of our calls that <coughs> had been coming in was from walkers saying the kids are pitching and the ball's passing through and they're almost hitting us walking so that's that's from the same sure. walkers. <coughs> yeah. we try to, we're trying to get them away from the sidewalk. Yeah. That way we, we can control at least that. I know it's a two four, but I, I, and I'm just saying again, as a coach, even with the back. Stop, every coach knows that, uh, you know, there's, there's when you hit a foul, foul pitches foul and there's foul, and there, there's backstop does a certain amount. It's actually, it, it's it's it it allows practice, effective practice to happen because it's going to contain most of the balls, right? But it, it still doesn't account for, for, for the stray. So again, I just go back to um, there's one safety issue and you're creating another safety issue. So just was it all discussed? I, I don't know. I'm it's, asking. Again, I think it goes back to the activity is going to happen, whether the backstop is there or not. There are kids that are going to be pitching practice or whatever. Um, so I don't think I, that's not been my experience of living over there. That when you say pitching practice at a certain velocity with at a certain age and certain age, I, I haven't seen fast pitch act right, there, right. not a lot of it. Right. And, and, and the reason is, as a coach, I wouldn't want to have it there if I didn't have, you know, an appropriate backstop. There's cars that park there, too. I mean, I, maybe that, you know, that, I, anyways. I think for the fast pitch, I've seen the guys that do do practice the fast pitch. Yeah. They set up their portable ones, mm -hmm. the yeah. breaker ones, real quick. I've seen those. And I think yeah, those right are the ones too. that yeah. attract more on that yeah. situation. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's, let's I would talk be in agreement to just it. talk more I, about it. But, oh, go ahead. I guess, well, I was just going to comment that, um, in, in, uh, that I know that the uh, Parks and Rec Commission have discussed this. And I, my understanding is that they were unanimous in bringing this to us. So I, I think they've, they've considered all of these things that have been said today. And since I pass by there every single day, I don't know how many times a day, I see a big use of that park. And I don't think, I mean, it, if we did um, make another uh, uh, space available, let's say at Pat Williams, mm -hmm. um, I don't think you're going to be able to direct the, the families and the kids over there. They're going to go where they're they feel comfortable they. already, and I think they feel comfortable there because that park is used all the time. And most of the kids that I've seen there are smaller, are smaller kids with parents. Yeah. Um, so I would probably support the recommendation from the, from the Planning Commission at this point, but if you guys want to table it until um, more information comes forward, I you know I don't have a problem with that either. So I do maybe have, just to give us we have we have a few more comments possibly. May, maybe just to give some alternative locations too. I think that's really important. I know that we have acreage, um, and I've always felt like Pat Williams is underutilized, but. You know, but it may or may not force be that people to go to a no, different park. They're going to go where they feel comfortable. Certainly, but if we can maybe invest, if we're already investing in something and invest in in a location to where maybe it, it's it's uh, designed for that, I, you know, that might be a better alternative. So, yeah. Uh, good I evening, um, Mayor and City sure. Council. Uh, my name's Jenny Benavides, and my concern is because I do go to that park uh, with family and friends on Sundays or if I can on Saturdays to play basketball, just shoot around with the kids. And I've, I've testified that I've seen kids almost being hit when those balls go to the street. And that's when it was brought up at the, where I belong at the part of the board and the commissioner, that for safety, because God forbid so far it hasn't happened. But if it does, we're gonna regret if that backstop is not put there because it's going to be removed within two months it's not going to stay there permanently so people go wherever they see but like they say there's not a lot of fields we get people from out of town not just brawley that come and use our parks so there's hardly any room where to go and another thing um we found out through our meetings that it's called a neighborhood park which i asked a question about does it belong to the the homeowners or the city and i asked miguel who does the maintenance do they do it or the city? The city does. Mm -hmm. So then who has the right to say who uses it? 
So then you have to limit them who can use that park, which I don't think it's fair. It's open to the public, right? I mean, of course. if yeah, anybody can answer that. Yeah. Debating that. I it's the think. safety that yeah. I think, because I go there, like I said, and I've seen that. And it's scary. Like I said, hopefully it's not one of the kids that belongs to those homeowners that gets hit. Then something has to be done by them. But why wait till that time? But, but it, Ms. Benavides, I mean, the point I'm taking, it's, it's not to thwart that, but if you play basketball and the ball goes down the park, what about those kids getting hit? Do we need to, meaning, For everybody we get that. Using I mean, the park. you can't, in, in case the whole parks, I'm just looking at, um, I, I think what we're saying by, what, what's meant by neighborhood park by definition is it has certain attributes and characteristics. So it, it, that, is, it is not a... It's not a baseball park or a softball park is really what it boils down to. So we understand that there's some practice that happens. So, you know, it's kind of a bigger decision. And I'm only asking the questions because I wasn't at the Parks and Rec, you know, meeting. So that's the only reason I'm asking. But, um, and this is helpful. You know, I, I, I certainly want to get that uh, input. Um, but what, would would a link fence help putting it around the park? I mean, it's a small park. What's that, putting a, a fencing a link around fence the fence all the way around, I mean. Yeah, that's uh, not wouldn't yeah. aesthetically, I think it would yeah. be. And that would keep, you wouldn't have to put a backstop. <laughs> I mean, it's just a suggestion. I mean, because it's a small part, and balls do go to the, even the basketballs, because we would have to be chasing them a lot. Yes, sir. Yeah. But I'm just saying, God forbid, a kid doesn't get hit one of these days, and that's going to look bad, too. Hey, maybe something to think about as you process it is, whether this is a good purchase to make for another park, ultimately, try it out at Thornton, see if it works, see if it creates more problems than it solves, and if it if it does create more problems, move it to a better location that we find. Something to consider, uh, you know, before it's brought to the next meeting or whatever meeting it's brought to. I think there's a few <coughs> things to consider there. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Just reading the backup material again, I didn't have a lot, a lot of opportunity. I think maybe just if nothing else, the time would give me an opportunity to engage, talk to some um, um, Parks and Rec members, um, and um, certainly, you know, again, I, I've heard this before. I remember in the past, obviously, when this came up, but I, I'm going to be quite honest. I haven't, I haven't spent time on this topic, you know, specifically, um, even in the neighborhood. And so if, if we can allow that time and maybe um, not make a recommendation at this moment, bring it back to the next meeting, give us an opportunity to um, ask more questions, weigh some options, and have some conversations, that would be great. And I also think um, staff is very willing to pull the neighborhood or hand out a questionnaire or see what we can do to to actually ask residents in the area also mm -hmm. if yeah. if that's something else that you want to direct us to do since it was brought up sure if, if, if that opportunity is i think we should i mean i think that's important for that neighborhood what, to see what they would yeah. like i mean is there even lower hanging fruit where you know whether it's a you know a directed communication mail text i i, I don't know of I mean, there's a lot of different methodologies so out there that we could either door knock or we yeah. could leave uh hold uh leave a flyer for a, a gathering where a meeting takes place and yeah. we talk through the ideas that are being kicked around yeah. and see who shows up i mean there's a lot of ways th to I'm, skin the cat i'm open to any of that yeah think, yeah and then but let's also consider you know if there are locations that are underutilized you know let, let's consider that if we can make i've always felt and I've, I've said this for a long time in that you know i go back to pat williams but pat williams is an underutilized park it's not it's a lot of acreage and if we're able to to maybe get some portable backstops in there to where it's may, it's obviously not for you know the larger kids but uh smaller kids and it's more of a practical location that might be a safer alternative it's just something to consider but i think there's a few points brought up here today to consider. Just for, so. And just to uh, clarify, is that an uh, actual fact that P Pat Williams is an underutilized park? I mean, the it, statistically, it was, does that? It wasn't listed in the five-year plan, and I think that trying to get statistics of neighborhood use would be difficult, um, uh, uh, other than uh, anecdotal. Okay. Well, I think we've got just scheduled wondered. activities that occur at all of our park facilities yes, and applications. 
I don't recall that Pat Williams has been defined as a facility that's overscheduled. Our overscheduled facilities are all the known locations. It's, you know, Wiestfield, Hinojosa, uh, Abe Gonzalez, uh, Meserve. Those are the oversubscribed parks with improvements and are the most ideal as practice locations. If you want to add to that, Miguel, please uh, do. Pat Williams, the majority is. Uh, uh, like church events, uh, big big company, Holly Sugar does their annual big picnic out there. I know some churches do do their big annual stuff out there. Uh, I know Little League uses it out there as well. I've been uh, by Ryan uh, Revelar of the um, AYFL from Brawley. Mm -hmm. They've, they've been using it as well. They've asked, what do you think about enhancing that area for uh, football as well uh, so it's it's not an overused but it's a, not an underused as, mm. as well so okay it has its use just wanted to clarify okay. that. so I just and also for clarification I just uh, the main the, is the main objective to uh, putting this backstop there is a aesthetics or is there a Oh. <laughs> well, the concerns were aesthetics, but also uh, just what I think Mayor Wharton has described and, and, and uh, Council Member Hamby has also uh, referenced, which was, you know, increasing use by maybe participants that hit harder, pitch faster, that kind of thing, too. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I guess one question would be, if the majority of people that are using that for this type of activity are coming from the neighborhood, the surrounding neighborhood or if they're coming from out of the area and could just as easily go to another park but if it's mostly if it's people from the neighborhood using it then as you said they won't want to travel across well, town to right. a different park because yeah, there's a lot of vehicles that are parked so mm -hmm. I imagine it's probably people coming in. Yeah. Mm. Good evening Julio Havregui 1106 Calle del Sol I'm with the Parks and Recreation Commission and it seems like uh, what I'm hearing is that some of uh, the neighbors are more concerned about aesthetics than safety. Uh, I have brought this issue last year because I, I go through that street almost every day. And uh, I see uh, a lot of kids, small kids, uh, playing there. And uh, unfortunately, I, when I was passing by a few times, some balls were on the street and some of the kids were chasing them. So, uh, you know, fortunately, there was no uh, cars going by at that time. But I noticed that, wait a minute, uh, this is a safety issue. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe that uh, by putting the backstop that that's going to uh, bring in 15, 16, or 18-year-olds to come and pitch there and throw hit and, and pitch. Uh, fastballs and things like that. All I see is kids that are, you know, six, seven, eight years old. When boy uh, baseball comes around, uh, I see just uh, the little kids. Uh, it's not going to solve the whole problem, you know, but at least it's going to solve a little bit of the problem. Thank you. Thank you for all your input. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. All right, we'll go to uh, our next item, which will be item six, city council member reports, and we'll begin with council member Hamm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, <clears throat> since our last meeting, I've had a few events to attend. One was the uh, California League of Cities dinner in Westmoreland at the Town Pump. It was very well attended. I think they said they had 80 people there in attendance, and it was a good meeting, good meal. Um, got to have some interesting conversations with uh, with a, a few different people, notably uh, someone from the California Public Utilities Commission um, and, and discussing some issues in San Diego and, and even some issues here. But it, it, uh, it brought to the front of my mind how, how unique and fortunate we are in the Imperial Valley with, with the IID to have, you know, this entity that controls power and water, but also makes it possible for us to have some of the the cheapest rates for power and for water in the state and that's that's pretty incredible that the founding fathers of that organization were able to have such foresight uh, to be able to protect those rights I know there's a lot of stuff in flux right now but but it, it just brought that to my mind um, also attended the the North County Coalition for the Arts gala at um, at Stockman's Club 
it's a fundraiser that they have once a year to kind of kick off their uh, their season and um, they announced their spring musical production that will be at Palmer Auditorium that's going to be Cinderella in case anybody wants to show up for auditions that'll <laughs> be in January <coughs> Um, I also emceed that event. That was my, I think, one of my first MC uh, opportunities. So there you go. <coughs> I was told that I nailed it. So okay. yeah, you did. Yeah, That's yeah. all I can go off. Just on. that. My in. wife told me that. Okay. <laughs> 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 my wife told me. MC Hamby. <laughs> MC Hamby. That's there you me. go. <laughs> on the mic. There you go. Um, I I did want to say something about 4-H that I I didn't get an opportunity to say when the kids were here, but uh, that really uh, 4-H impacted my life um, from the age of about 11 or 12 and, and really formed a lot of who I am today as far as being able to do some public speaking even some of the the work that I do uh, in the community uh, I got the foundations of that in in 4-H and so I'm forever grateful to 4-H I, I appreciate um, the the skills and the um, the motivation that it teaches kids to have um, to get out and do things, and it's getting harder and harder to, to trans transfer that to each generation because we become more and more kind of surrounded by our, our things and our devices that we may have a lot of communication with, with other people through those devices, but face-to-face -face, uh, it's, it's becoming more rare. And so uh, I'm <coughs> grateful for that opportunity that 4-H gave me, and I, I, I can probably say with confidence that uh, without having gone through 4-H, I probably wouldn't be sitting behind the dais today. So um, maybe maybe I shouldn't be so grateful to 4-H for that, but I'm, <laughs> I'm here, whatever the case. Um, but uh, other than that, I, I fielded some calls from different community members uh, that were concerned about some issues, passed on some of those to the city manager. I did get a, um, a phone call of thanks for... Um, for uh, speaking with the city manager and pushing to get some um, railroad crossings repaired and um, those have moved forward so people are happy about that um, their their suspensions on their vehicles are grateful too so that's it for my report very good thank you councilmember Hamby councilmember couchman okay uh, I did also attend the NOCA event you did nail it thank you it was hey. perfect yeah, yeah. That's great. <laughs> thank you very much um, then we also, uh, California League of Cities dinner, that was an interesting dinner, well attended. A lot of things, I think I was a target, but <laughs> I, I, I forgive everyone. Um, let's see, and then we had, I went to the Citizens Energy Program out near Calipatria uh, with Norma. Uh, we went out there to, to celebrate IID and the Citizens Energy, um, the company that put that in, and we had um, uh, quite a, quite well attended and a lot of people there and it, it's an interesting project and it's a public uh, private enterprise so it's kind of a neat thing for IID to be involved in and I thought that was was a great project I think it's 30 megawatts I think it was it's a, it's a smaller project so it's 30 megawatts out there um, then also I also attended the collab um, event the drawdown dinner uh, we had a good time there uh, the mayor was there and um, that they, they had a pretty good attendance and it was it was a real nice event a real, at the Stockman's Club. So, uh, walk to school tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is walk to school day. Uh, I plan to walk to school with Phil Swing, where my granddaughter uh, goes. So I will be out there walking. Um, I'm sure the police department and fire department will probably be there also. And so we're planning to walk to school. Um, other than that, I think I think that's about it. I just want to comment. You know, commend all the city employees. I see you guys out there working all the time. I, I see a lot of things going on in town. There's a lot of construction going on, and a lot of a lot of things happening in Brawley right now. And so, with that, um, that's my report. Thank you, Thank you Councilmember Couchman, Councilmember Nava. All right, everyone. Uh, we'll uh, did attend and participated in the ICTC, the Transportation Commission meeting um, this past week, and uh, just a brief celebration of Kathy Williams' retirement. She was a longtime um, employee of not just ICTC but the previous um, organization. So she's been instrumental in helping grow the the agency um, from like a couple of. Uh, transit buses to over 60 so it's it's been a big improvement throughout the valley and she's been a, a lot of help a lot of experience so we're going to be missing that but um she's also helped develop a very solid team um, within 
ICTC as well as Mark, and he, he was here earlier. Um, but, uh, you know, there's some big shoes to fill there, certainly. But, um, you know, ICTC and the Transportation Commission, I think it's made a lot of improvements and strides over the past several years. And you see uh, maybe some of you um, use the local transportation system. Maybe some of you don't. But uh, even the, the gold line throughout the city of Brawley, that's something that's been developed over just the past few years, and it's got multiple stops through Brawley, and if you haven't used it, you should at least try it once uh, just to see what that experience is like. Um, but it's a very efficient system. So anyway, uh, ICTC meeting um, and some other updates uh, from that meeting as well. I also went to the Cancer Resource Center of the Desert um, a third annual event. It was well attended. It was a great event. It was boxing themed to fight out, you know, uh, cancer. And um, I actually got to meet Chris Bird, who's a former two-time uh, former heavyweight champion of the world. He was the keynote speaker and spent quite a bit of time talking with him, actually. And so he gave a story, and part of his speech was just um, he. If you guys don't know him, he beat one of the Klitschko brothers, and then his the Klitschko brother beat him. So. He lost his title to him, and uh, he also beat Evander Holyfield. So and then after that, it was like the Klitschko's for like 10 years, and then, uh, you know, Wilder and now Andy Reid. So it's it's been an interesting, interesting uh, heavyweight division. Uh, he's a lot smaller now. He's at his amateur weight, which is 165 pounds, so he looks a lot thinner, thinner than me for sure, you know, and so... Um, but it was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, he did talk about his experience and having suffered um, a lot of ailments and being suicidal and then just going through a lot of different things in his life. So it was just really inspiring to hear him. And just the, the, the message uh, that he gave was just not giving up and fighting through things and making sure that... Um, you know, everybody's going through their own personal challenges, like we all are. Um, but you know, making sure that that you stay motivated and and uh, fight through them. So it was a really, really great um, keynote speech, um, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. So it represented the city of Raleigh there. There was other um, uh, cities represented there, but I think it was good on our behalf just to show support for the agency. So um, also attended the Hemp Summit, and that was. Um, put on by IVDC um, and the County of Imperial, and it really was well attended. It was a lot of um, uh, people from in agriculture from throughout the area and from outside of the area. Some came from, you know, other states and some came from, from uh, you know, Sacramento and other places. So they came in and uh, learned a lot about what's taking place here in the county. And so, as you all know, they're, they're working on uh, kind of perfecting the, the growth of hemp here. I know some fields you've passed by on Highway 86 don't look um, like they're doing that well. They're not faring that well. But there are others um, that are growing well, and so that's still in a research phase. And I think once they, once they um, uh, perfect that system, and now because under the Farm Bill it is allowed to be able to grow hemp, and if you know we're able to take advantage of it in in the form of the city of Brawley, in the sense of you know there are companies that are wanting to locate um, some manufacturing facilities here. There are companies that are wanting to locate office facilities here. So I think we stand to 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 benefit from that industry. And the one thing I do want to point out, I, I'm sorry to make this so long, but the one thing I do want to point out is that. There are some things, you know, there's the cannabis and then there's hemp, right? Cannabis, it, I think it's very limited, but hemp, you need farm ground, you need water to grow that. And that's the things that we have here in Imperial County. So there could be tremendous opportunity for industry and for this economy. So those are things to consider. I hope um, the research that they're doing now with, with IVC, um, Imperial Valley College, I hope it's fruitful and I hope that they discover on how to grow it in this environment. So anyway, that's my report and just want to thank everybody else for coming out. Thank you, Council Member Nava, Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> Okay, well, I attended, like Sam said, we both attended the IID Citizens Low Income Community Solar Project out there in Calipatria. And it was very well attended and very interesting. And it was good to see that such a, they took interest in, in that project here in Imperial County. It's going to benefit all, it's going to benefit the low income population of our county. So if you know any folks that uh, fall into that criteria, they need to go ahead and contact IID and apply for further uh, reduction in their IID bill. Um, and uh, we actually had a photo op 
uh, opportunity. <laughs> uh, Joseph Kennedy II was there, and he's actually the he's the one that uh, started that company, the Citizens uh, Low the Citizens uh, Project. And he, um, uh, he, you could tell he was a Kennedy. He's an outstanding speaker. I mean, his his voice just carried. So Sam and I had the opportunity to take a picture with him and uh, and talk to him and talk about all the different things that he's uh, working on. And they put a plug in also for him to possibly look into <coughs> investing in the Salton Sea. So hopefully, uh, he might be interested in in coming back here and looking at the Salton Sea and see what he can do to help us out here. Um, then I also um, met with a local uh, nonprofit uh, director that's interested in, in working with us and furthering a, a contract that we have or, or an agreement with that uh, with a particular agency. So I shared the information with Rosanna, and it's something that we're, we're as a council, will probably uh, be looking at. And I attended the uh, California League of Cities dinner, which was very well attended. Always really great information and uh, wish we could all participate in a lot of mo more of those committees in Sacramento. And like I expressed to uh, the president uh, is that uh, I wish I could at attend more of those, but you know, flying to Sacramento and taking the time to go to Sacramento is expensive. So I think they're looking at ways that maybe we can participate through conference calls and things like that to get the information and, and uh, be able to contribute to those committees. And then, other than that, I um, I met with a couple of people that had some concerns, and I have shared those with uh, Rosanna and with staff. And I want to thank thank staff for being so responsive uh, to the concerns that the citizens bring to us. And I also wanted to mention a little bit about 4-H, <laughs> <laughs> because I too I do recall that I took advantage of 4-H also when I was young, much a further back than, than Luke, uh, because the, the skills that I learned, the skills that I learned at that time, they were teaching homemaking skills. But I want to say that they taught me how to sew with a Singer sewing machine, and it's one of those skills that you learn and you never forget. So you could bring me a Singer sewing machine now and I could still sew. So I really appreciated the 4-H. They taught us a lot of homemaking skills. And, and a lot of uh, leadership skills, too, mm -hmm. like you said. But I think at that time, it was more concentrated on, on homemaking. But, so that's my report. Thank Very you, Mr. Very good. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, for that report. And um, as everyone's already echoed, um, attended a collab drawdown uh, dinner uh, at the Stockman's California League of Cities. Um, had a, another brief meeting with a couple members of the Cattle Call Committee. And also had the opportunity, by way of invitation, to uh, uh, go to a hosted lunch at uh, NAFL Centro with uh, the commanding officer Alfonso, um, which was really nice again, and that was a community outreach on their part, making sure that their partnership as part of the county um, is, is certainly um, playing to the favor of the residents and, and all those concerned, and it sounded like the doors always open. Uh, lunch was great, and um, I believe also, I think it was the beginning of the year, he will be the outgoing commander. There'll be a change of command. I believe it'll be an interim commander, and then there'll be a permanent after that. So um, that is my report, and um, lots going on. My last uh, thing, that not necessarily part of the report, but um, I think we should all buckle up. It's going to get really busy here for October <laughs> into uh, November and a little bit of um, I think the scheduling is going to get uh, really, really busy, and I, I think a reminder to the public, our next meeting got changed to, to the 14th of October to accommodate uh, most of the council that will be attending the annual League of Cities conference in Long Beach. So, um, and, Mr. Mayor, yeah. and also Los Cabos, the restaurant yep. that's on the plaza, that will be opening soon, so you might want to there, just there's mention that. There's mention of uh, opening. There's a soft opening taking place tomorrow evening, I, I, I believe, and it be a great opportunity to take advantage of that and go see what things look like inside. Um, maybe perhaps, maybe experience some of whatever um, they might be uh, sampling or sharing. Um, and then um, since we're talking about tomorrow already, I'll just throw in, I do intend for my first time actually to make it to the walk to school. So I, I what school you're walking with? We, I'm, I haven't decided yet. Beating but, school. Uh, well, I'll be at yeah. first swing. We could race. You're going to race? <laughs> okay. Man, oh, that sounds good. I heard something about yeah. ambulance right. is usually standing by so they can pick me up about a block down the route, you know, if I'm racing. <laughs> You're going to be on a bike? <laughs> no, no. No, no. no. Oh, no. All right. Sorry, that was just a reference. Sorry, no. <laughs> cool race. Very good. Um, thank you very much. I'll now move to our city manager for the city manager's report. Nothing further at this time.
Okay, thank you, City I'm Attorney. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And our City Clerk. Happy All right, we will uh, take a brief uh, break here. We'll go to closed session. Thank you, everyone, for attending tonight.